بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد so inshallah brothers we continue from where we left off last week's lesson the shaykh was talking about um the doubts if somebody has doubts in the kufr of the disbelievers or in the disbelief of the disbelievers if somebody is like this then it renders them um a disbeliever or somebody who as in the previous uh, lesson for the shaykh gave the examples that somebody condones the beliefs of the disbelievers or has a doubt in the uh, disbelief of the disbelievers and uh, whoever has missed that lesson or needs to go through that then please refer to the previous recording inshallah we'll continue from where we left off today <clears throat> so the sheikh he continues and he says qala o ya shukku fi kufrihim ay ya shukku fi kufr min uh من حكم الله بكفره أو أو حكم رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام بكفره كأن يقول قائل مثلا أنا عندي تردد تردد في كفر اليهود أو كفر النصارى اليهود قوم نزل عليهم كتاب وهم أهل الكتاب والنصارى قوم أهل الكتاب نزل عليهم أو أو نزل عليهم الإنجيل فهم أهل الكتاب فأنا متردد في الحكم بكفرهم أو أشك في كفرهم وأنهم كفار أو لا أدري هل 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 هم كفار أو ليس كفار الأمر ليس متيقنا عندي فمن شك في كفرهم قام في قلبه شك في كفر من حكم الله بكفره فهو كافر لأن هذا شك في حكم الله وشك في حكم رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام ومن رد على الله أو على رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم حكمه أو شك في حكم الله عز وجل أو حكم رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام فليس بمسلم والإسلام هو الإقرار والتصديق والإيمان بكل ما جاء عن الله وجاء عن رسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام وشهادة, وشهادة أن محمد رسول الله هي تصديقه فيما أخبر وطاعته فيما أمر والانتهاء وما نعه عنه وزجر صلوات الله وسلام عليه so then the Sheikh here, he continues and, and he, he quotes the original author, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahmallah. And the Sheikh, he explains here, he says, or oh, has doubt in the kufr or the disbelief of the disbelievers. So has a doubt about their disbelief. The Sheikh says, i.e., for example, um, the person... For example, in, in this situation, the person has a doubt in in, in, in their disbelief uh, with regard to uh, what Allah has ruled and judged to be a disbeliever. Um, and also, likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu has ruled to be a disbeliever and disbelieved with. And the Sheikh brings an example now here uh, to further explain. He says, like the one who says, for example, um, uh, I am, I'm not 100% sure, I'm not sure uh, 
for example, I'm not sure with the dis with regards to the disbelief of the Jews, for example, or the Christians. And then, for example, you'll say the the Jews, they're a people that the Torah was revealed to, and the Christians likewise were a people uh, that the Injil, the Gospel, was revealed to. Uh, and so I am, I'm in a catch twenty two situation. That's this person who may come with this. Uh, with regards to the judgment that they are, or the ruling that they are, disbelievers. Or he, or he may say, I am in doubt with regards to their disbelief, and that they are actual disbelievers. Or he may say, I don't know, are they disbelievers? Uh, uh, or he may say, oh, they, are, they are not disbelievers. And he may say that the affair is not certain with me. For example, so may come with these kinds of uh, examples. A person might say, we might come across people who say these kinds of things. The Sheikh says, so whoever doubts in their disbelief, then then what's in their heart is a, da a great doubt about the ruling, the ruling that Allah's ruled with, the, the judgments of Allah, and the rule, the the rule, the rules that Allah's ruled with, with regards to their disbelief, and because of this, the person then becomes a disbeliever himself. The Shaykh says because this doubt in the ruling and judgment of Allah Jalla wa Ala and in the and the doubt in the ruling and judgment of the the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam that's because of this. And whoever rejects Allah's judgment for example, here, or rejects the Prophet Sallallahu judgment, then in that case, then he has left the fold of Islam as opposed it. And the Shaykh mentions here that this person is not a Muslim in that regard. And the Shaykh says, and Al Islam, what is Al Islam? What, what is a Muslim? What is Al Islam? He says is testifying. Yeah, testifying and attesting. And uh, the truthfulness, and having having truthfulness, and believing, and having iman in that which uh, Allah has sent to us, and the Prophet Sallallahu came with, and the Sheikh mentions the shahada, the second testification that that, and the second testification, as we all know, is that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Messenger of Allah, and that. What is the meaning of that testification? Generally speaking, here yeah, the Sheikh mentions it to us, and it's really good benefit. It is believing in all that which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with of information and uh, and obeying him in that which he commanded us with to do, and staying away from all that which he had prohibited us from. Sallallahu wasallam And so, as you can see. Uh, understanding this, then it shows that if somebody then disbelieves uh, in the in 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 the in the judgment that Allah has passed, or the judgment that the that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has passed, then he ends up falling into disbelief. The Sheikh continues. He says, "Qala, <clears> or sahaha madhabahum kafara." Going back to the original authors' quote, quote here from the original book. Or if a person um, corrects or says uh, the easiest way to say this is if a person says oh no their way of life or their religion is correct then if a person says something like this he also has disbelieved and the sheikh explains he says hey, uh, uh, الكفار, مثلاً, اليهود, صحيح, صحيحة, الأشياء التي يؤمنون بها والأعمال التي يمارسونها صحيحة أو قال النصارى أديانهم صحيحة أعمالهم صحيحة إبادة النصارى إبادة صحيحة أو قال العمل الذي يفعله المشركون عمل صحيح ليس كفر وليس شركة صحها مذهبهم أي اعتقد صحة أقائدهم الكفرية فهو مثلهم وأقيدته أقيدتهم فمن يصحح 
مذاهب الكفار وأقاعد الكفار وأعمال الكفار فهو منهم سواء صحها جملة كأن يقول أقاعد الكفار أو أقاعد اليهود صحيحة أقاعد النصارى صحيحة دين اليهود صحيحة دين النصارى صحيح سواء صحها جملة أو صحها بعد أقاعد الكفرية ولو واحدة من أقاعد أقاعد أقاعدهم الكفرية الناقلة من الملة إن صحها إن صحها يكون كافرا مثل مثل لو قال قائل قول النصارى عيسى بن الله هذا صحيح فإنه يكفر أو لو قال أشك في أن هذا كفر يكفر بذلك لأن الله عز وجل قضى بكفر ها ها بكفر هذا وأنه كفر بالله عز وجل ناقل من ملة الإسلام. So then the Sheikh goes on to say also if a person for example corrects or says that the belief of so and so or a group is correct and the Sheikh comes with some examples for us here to help us understand that. He says for example uh, the one who uh, says that the way of the disbelievers is correct or says for example the religion of the Jews is a is a is a correct and upright religion or says their belief or their creed is correct or says um, some of the things you know that they believe and uh, and and the you know actions that they do and perform uh, uh, they are correct or he says for example the Christians you know their religion is correct uh, and upright or he says uh, uh, some of the actions or deeds that they that, that that they perform are correct or he says for example the worship of the Christians is a correct kind of worship or he says for example their deed uh, the deeds that they that that they do that the mushrikun do uh, is correct that their deeds the poly, the deeds of the polytheists are correct and it's not disbelief and it is not a shirk if they say things like this and the sheikh says for example uh, rectifying or saying that their way is correct and and is and it's fine things like this uh, for example saying their belief their creed um, you know um, uh, is not kufr etc as the sheikh has mentioned and the sheikh goes on to say and brings some examples and he says whether they say generally or specifically whoever says this this kind of speech whether it's generally or specifically as it renders him a disbeliever by believing in this and saying these kinds of things as the sheikh has given some examples and then the sheikh says that he explains he says even if it's just one of these points he mentions, it renders him a disbeliever. <clears throat> and the Sheikh says, he brings another example. He says, for example, if the person says, oh, the, you know, the Christians, yeah, the, the you know, the speech of the, the speech of the Christians that, uh, what well, the Christians say that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, uh, is the son of God or son of Allah, a'udhu billah, that if he says that this is sahih, for example, this is correct then he, he, indeed he has committed kufr and he has disbelieved in Allah and has left the fall of Islam. Or if a person says, I doubt, even if they say, for example, the Sheikh brings this example again, if if the person says, I doubt that this particular thing is disbelief, then the person disbelieves by way of that. And the Sheikh says, because Allah Azawajal has already, you know, judged and ruled that that Whatever that particular thing is, or group is, or what actions they do of deeds, or whatever they say is kufr, then it's kufr. Allah has already ruled in that matter. And if somebody goes against it and goes in opposition to it, then by way of that, as the Sheikh has explained in the last couple of paragraphs, the person leaves the fall of Islam. So then the Sheikh continues, he says, فَهَذَا نَاقِضٌ لِلْإِسْلَامِ من لم يكفر المشركين أو يشك في كفرهم أو صحها مذاهبهم مذاهبهم كفر والمسلم الذي رضي بالله عز وجل ربا وبنبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسولا 
وبالإسلام دينا هو من قامت به حقيقة الإسلام ومن حقيقة الإسلام البراءة أو ومن حقيقة الإسلام البراءة من الطاغوت البراءة من كل ما يعبد من دون الله والبراءة من أهله ومعاداتهم وبغضهم في الله تبارك وتعالى ومن لم يكن كذلك فليس بمسلم لأنه كما تقدم مصادم لحقيقة, لحقيقة ما دل عليه كتاب الله عز وجل وسنة, وسنة نبي صلوات الله وسلامه عليه So then the Sheikh, he says, that, so then this, that what we're discussing presently and currently, then this is, this basically is a nullifier of Islam. The Sheikh says, whoever does not think or does not believe that the polytheists are disbelievers or has a doubt in their disbelief or corrects their way of life and says, oh no, what they do is fine and it's not disbelief, then this person in any of these three categories, uh, whoever falls into these three categories, has actually committed disbelief and leaves the fold of Islam. The Sheikh says the Muslim is who, he who is pleased, who is pleased with Allah Azza wa Jal as a Lord over him, and, uh, and pleased uh, uh, with uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his messenger and is pleased with al-Islam as his way of life and religion. So the Shaykh says, so whoever actualizes his Islam, then, and the Shaykh says, whoever um, actualizes Islam, and then he says, from, from the actualization or reality of uh, someone's Islam is freeing oneself from At-Tawut and At-Tawut is all that which uh, is worshipped all those things whether it be an inanimate object uh, an animal object whether it be a human being a jinn anything other than Allah is worshipped as At-Tawut and so it's upon a Muslim to free himself from any kind of Tawut and transgression and that which the Sheikh explained previously as well in the last lesson, that Atawut is that uh, or everything that is worshipped besides Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And so we have to a Muslim has to free himself from that and has to free himself from the traditions and ways um, of the uh, disbelievers, um, and also has to, uh, for the sake of Allah, has to have that hate within his heart. Of the people of Kufr of what they do, the hate is related to the 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 deeds and the crimes that they commit against Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you know from shirk and other than that, this is what the hate is to do with. It's not to do with personal hate. There's nothing like that in Islam. It's to do with hating for the sake of Allah. What those people have uh, fallen into of shirk, polytheism, and other uh, grievous and heinous crimes. <coughs> so then the Shaykh goes on to say finally here in the last uh, sentence he says and whoever isn't like this and doesn't have these qualities then he's not a Muslim because as the Shaykh mentioned as he says what has transpired uh, he's actually um, in uh, is conflicting this, this person is conflicting between his Islam and that which uh, the Quran and the Sunnah came with is, in, is 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 conflicting with it and colliding with this uh, and in opposition to it. So then the Shaykh he says, "Wanaktafi bihada bihada, wallahu taala alam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala abdi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad." So then the Shaykh finishes there, but we'll carry on because we'll move on to the next lessons. We should we should have enough time, inshallah, to carry on. So rather than stopping, we'll continue, inshallah. So then we move on to uh, Adars al-Sadis and the Shaykh, he says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Yaqulu al-Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala wa ghafara lahu wa li-Shaykhina fi kitabi uh, Nawaqid al-Islam al-Rabi'u 
من اعتقد أن غير هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل من هديه أو أن حكم غيره أحسن من حكمه كالذين يفضلون حكم التواغيت على حكمه فهو كافر So then the shaykh uh, continues and we move on to the sixth lesson within this book uh, The Nullifiers of Islam And it begins with the basmala Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim And he says And he says the uh, al imam muhammad ibn abdul wahhab rahimahullah he says um he said after saying that um uh, after seeking forgiveness for him from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sheikh who's explained this book sheikh abdul razak al badr rahimahullah he says in his book nawaqid al islam the nullifiers of islam and fourthly the fourth point the fourth nullifier whoever believes that the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his sunnah, um, or whoever believes that, uh, in other than the completeness, let's say it this way, whoever believes in other than the completeness of the uh, sunnah and the way of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, for example, uh, or or the Sheikh says, or believes in other rulings and judgments that are he believes to be better than the judgment. Of uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and believes that other judgments or rulings, are, or legislation or legislature, is better than that of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he prefers it over that, uh, and he prefers those other rulings that are not from the from Allah jalla and from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and all of that other than from what comes from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah jalla wala, then obviously that's the ruling or legislature of the Tawagheed as the Sheikh mentioned before Tawagheed is all that which is worshipped besides Allah Jalla wa'ala. so then by way of this if the person is like this then he has fallen into Kufr and he leaves the fold of Al-Islam and the Sheikh will explain because this is important to understand this properly because in the in, in, in especially in our day and age and even in previous times uh, and uh, particularly in our day and age people do not understand this and they apply the rulings incorrectly and uh, it causes a lot of problems. So it's important to understand these principles correctly so we can apply them as well properly and understand them and have good understanding, inshallah. So then the Shaykh, he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasoolu Sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'd هذا هو الناقض الرابع من نواقض الإسلام التي ذكرها شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى وغفر له. So the Sheikh just mentions what we previously mentioned that this is the fourth, uh, this is the fourth uh, nullifier of Islam, uh, uh, and he goes on to explain. He says, قال من اعتقد أن غير هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل من هديه أو أن حكم غيره أحسن من حكمه. كَالَّذِينَ يُفَضِّلُونَ حُكْمَ الطَّوَاغِيْتِ عَلَى حُكْمِهِ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ So we already mentioned that. We carry on. The Sheikh is quoting again for us. هذا الناقد يرتبط بمشاهدة أن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله والله عز وجل لا يقبل من أحد لا إله إلا الله إلا إذا ضم إليها وقرن بها محمد رسول الله وعلى هاتين شهادتين قيام الدين وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِيهَا تَوْحِيدُ الرَّبِّ جَلَّ وَعَلَى بِالْعِبَادَةِ وَمُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ فِيهَا تَجْرِيدَ الْمُتَابَعَ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ So this is an important point here. The Sheikh says, and he says, this is the fourth nullifier of Islam. And he says it's linked to the shahada, the second testification, أَنَّ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ That uh, that when when all Muslims believe in, and when a new Muslim, he says the first testification, the second testification is Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And the Sheikh mentions that the first testification, which we say La ilaha illallah, that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah, does not stand, except if we join with it the second testification, Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, and that they are linked and they are together. And we have to believe and testify in them together. And the Shaykh goes on to say, he says that these two shahadas, they are, you know, upon them stands our deen. You know, they're the foundations of our deen. And he says, وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِيهَا 
at Tawheed or Rabb. And in La ilaha illallah, as in previous books and the previous lessons with regards to this book as well, as we know that it's uh, all of this La ilaha illallah is a kalimat at Tawheed. Tawheed, yeah? As mentioned before, uh, with regards to singling out Allah, in all forms of worship, we single out Allah and direct all our worship to Allah Jalla wa'ala alone and nobody else. This is the Tawheed of Allah. Yeah? And that Muhammad... Uh, uh, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And in this second testification About the messenger And testifying that the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Is the servant and messenger of Allah In it is Showing That we follow everything That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Has come with and, has, uh, and we believe In everything in terms of the information That he came with in, and we, we follow and are obedient in all the commandments he commanded us, us with and we stay away from all that he prohibited us from. This is the meaning of the Shahada. And and therefore, we need to understand that when we say that, then it's upon us then to actualize that and make a reality by following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what the Sheikh is saying here. So the Sheikh continues, he says, وَنَبِيُّنَا مُحَمَّدٌ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ هُوَ خَاتُمُ النَّبِيِّينَ وَخَيْرَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَشَرِيعَتُهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ خَيْرَ الشَّرَاعِ وَأَتَمُّهَا وَأَكْمَلُهَا وَكِتَابُهُ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ أَعْظَمُ الْكُتُبِ وَأَجَلُهَا وَبِشَرِيعَتِهِ خُتِمَتْ الشَّرَاعِ وَبَعْدَ وَبَعْدَ بِئْثَتِهِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ لَا يَقْبَلَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عَمَلًا عَامِلْ إِلَّا إِذَا كَانَ وُفْقَ حَدِّهِ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْهِ So then the Shaykh says, Our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He is the seal of the prophets. He is the final prophet. There will be no prophet or messenger coming after him. And he is the best of the messengers. And his legislation, the Sharia, the legislation that the Prophet Sallallahu came with is the best of legislations and it's the most complete of them. And the book that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he came with, the, the ayah, the Quran that was revealed to him is the most, is the greatest and most magnificent of the books that have been revealed by Allah Jalla wa Ala. And and by the legislature, the legislature that the Prophet Sallallahu came with was it sealed. This leg, the final, this final legislature, it seals all the previous legislatures and laws. And that is when the uh, after the um, the uh, sending of the Prophet Sallallahu on his mission. Um, and so the Sheikh says, Allah does not accept. Allah Azawajal does not accept a deed or an action of of the of the one who does those actions except it being in line with the guidance of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is previously mentioned as well in this book i believe and previous books that we we've, we've gone through the brothers who have been in these lessons they'll know and whoever has listened to the lessons previously they'll know that there are two pillars and if they are not fulfilled your your action your good deed is not accepted the first one, it has to be with ikhlas. It has to be with ikhlas. As, as Sheikh has not mentioned it here, but I'll, I'll mention it. Um, it has to be with ikhlas. Purely and sincerely for the sake of Allah. And the second pillar that needs to be fulfilled, as mentioned here, where the Sheikh has mentioned, it has to be in in line with the sunnah, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If these two pillars are not met, or if one of them is uh, not uh, upheld the the uh, your action is nullified and you won't get a reward for it so this is very important in building up good deeds and making sure that we benefit from our good deeds so then the sheikh says wa shariatuhu tamatun kamilatun aqidatan wa ibadatan wa muamalatan wa khuluqan qala allah ta'ala al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ وَمَا تَرَكَ خَيْرًا إِلَّا دَلَّ الْأُمَّةِ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا شَرًا إِلَّا 
حضرها منه بلغ عليه الصلاة والسلام البلاغ المبين وأتم الله وأتم الله عز وجل به الدين وأكمل به النعمة ولم يموت عليه الصلاة والسلام حتى أنزل الله عز وجل قول قوله اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. So then the Sheikh he says in the next paragraph that the the legislature and the laws that the Prophet ﷺ came with they are complete, yeah, and upright and complete in terms of the creed that they consist of, uh, in terms of the worship and deeds and etiquette and manners. Everything about it is complete. And there's no better legislature than the legislature that the Prophet Sallallahu came with. And the Shaykh brings a, a, an evidence from us from Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 4. And, and so he says, uh, as mentioned in Arabic, and the uh, meaning in English is, Today I have completed and perfected your religion uh, and, and my blessings. Yeah, and I'm uh, and my blessings upon you, my favor upon you, and I'm pleased uh, with Al Islam as a deen for you. And you can refer that there's various translations of this, but this is the gist of the meaning. So the Sheikh says um, that there wasn't a goodness, there wasn't a goodness except that the Prophet Sallallahu there wasn't there something that was good except that the Prophet Sallallahu showed us what it was. And there wasn't something, there wasn't a thing that was evil, except that the Prophet ﷺ showed us what it was and warned us from it. And by way of the Prophet ﷺ, he completed his mission in portraying the message of Al Islam um, and completing uh, his mission um, uh, that Allah sent him to complete. And by way of him, Allah completed uh, this deen and this message. And this blessing that is upon us, the blessing of the religion of Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ did not die except until Allah had sent this ayah upon him. And this ayah that we read, same ayah again, the Sheikh mentions, it shows us that the message was complete. And when the message was complete, then the Prophet ﷺ left this world. And that Allah did not allow him to leave this world until the mission was complete and the message was uh, conveyed completely in its entirety. This is what the Shaykh is mentioning here. So the Shaykh continues says, وَمَنْ شَهِدَ أَنَّهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ فَإِنَّ هَذِي شَهَادَةُ فَإِنَّ هَذِي شَهَادَةَ تَقْتَذِي أَنْ يُطِيعَهُ فِي مَا أَمَرْ وَأَنْ يُصَدِّقَهُ فِي مَا أَخْبَرْ وَأَنْ يَنْتَهِيَ عَمَّا نَهَنْهُ وَزَجَرْ وَأَنْ لَا يَعْبُدَ اللَّهُ uh, وَلِتَقْتَدِي بِهِمْ بَشَرِيَّ وَلِيَسِيرُوا عَلَى نَهْجِهِمْ وَلِيَتَّخِذُوهُمْ قُدْوَةً لَهُمْ وَلِهَذَا قَالَ اللَّهَ عَنْ خَاتَمِهِمْ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْهِ لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ الله the Shaykh, he mentions to us, he mentions here in this paragraph, so whoever testifies that uh, that the Prophet ﷺ is a messenger of Allah, but indeed this testification then, what does it require of him? It, require, it requires of him that he obeys the Prophet ﷺ in that which he commanded him and in that which uh, he came of information and akhbar and uh, in, in that which uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, prohibited us from and told us to stay away from that we need to obey the Prophet ﷺ in all these and believe in the information that he came with and that you know that we don't worship Allah Jalla except by the example of the Prophet 
that we don't go around making our own things up or believing somebody else. No, we follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu explained everything to us, what we need to know in our daily lives. And that's the example we need to follow on the Shaykh. He says, uh, for the reason that the, the messengers were sent, it shows us that in this ayah that the Shaykh mentioned from Surah An-Nisa, verse 64, why were the messengers sent? If, and if you go to Surah An-Nisa, verse 64, and the rough meaning here, we sent no messenger but to be obeyed by Allah's leave. So that shows us why were the messenger sent? They were, they were sent so that we obey them in that which Allah sent them to convey to us. And then the Shaykh goes on to say, and that we obey them and that we take them as an example and the utmost example. And obviously the best example is the best of the messengers and prophets, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Shaykh brings another evidence. This is a well-known ayah we all know from Surah al hazab verse 21. And if we look at the roof meaning of this as well, you will, we will see was what the Shaykh is saying. Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have a good example to follow for him who hopes in the meeting with Allah and the last day and remembers Allah much. And this is the this is a clear verse which shows us that the importance and the requirement, the obligation for us to follow and take the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an example. The Shaykh continues, he says, وَلِهَذَا لَا يَتَحَقَّقُ الْإِسْلَامَ إِلَّا إِذَا وَلِهَذَا لَا يَتَحَقَّقُ الْإِسْلَامُ إِلَّا إِذَا حَقَّقَ الْعَبْدِ هَذَا الْأَصْلِ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ يُبْنَى كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ بُنِي الْإِسْلَامُ عَلَى خَمْسِ شَهَادَةً شَهَادَةً أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ فَهَاتَانِ شَهَادَتَانِ هُمَا أَعْذَمُ أَسَاسٍ يُبْنَى عَلَيْهِ دِينِ دِينِ اللَّهِ وَلَا قِيَامَ لِلدِّينِ إِلَّا عَلَى هَذَا الْأَسَاسِ وَهَذَا مَعْنَى قَوْلِ النَّبِيَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ فِي حَدِيثِ مُعَاذِ بْنُ جَبَلٍ الطَّوِيلِ وَفِيهِ قَالَ قَالَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ أَلَا أَلَا أُخْبِرُكَ بِرَأْسِ الْأَمْرِ وَأُمُودِهِ وَذَرْوَةِ سَنَامِهِ قُلْتُ بَلَى يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ الْإِسْلَامُ وأموده الصلاة وذروة سنامه وذروة سنام الجهاد في سبيل الله قال رأس الأمر الإسلام ومعلوم مكانة الرأس من الجسد وأن الرأس إذا قطع أصبح الجسد جثة هامدة قال رأس الأمر الإسلام والإسلام هو الاستسلام لله هو الاستسلام لله بالتوحيد والانقياد للرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام طواعية والامتثال والإيمان بما جاء به صلوات الله وسلامه عليه. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say he says and for this reason a person's Islam is not actualized except with following the example of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and being upon the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that the, the person's religion will not be complete and actualized or won't be in reality upon the way it should be. The person should be, except without following the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Why? Because it's the foundation. Because it's what everything else is built upon. As we know, the two testifications uh, of our deen, they are the foundations of our religion. And the Prophet says, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said that Islam is built upon five. Islam's foundations are five. That we testify that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah to the end. As we know, the five pillars of Islam. We all know that. And the Sheikh is just focusing on the first two here. Uh, the uh, uh, the first pillar, which is to do with the two testifications, the Shahadatan. He says, these two testifications, they are the greatest of the foundations that our religion, the religion of Allah, Jalla is built upon. And there is no standing, or there's no... Imagine the deen being... A building, a foundation, a building. The rest of the deen will not stand upon the foundations if you do not have those foundations are not sound. This is what the Sheikh is saying here, and he goes on to say, <coughs> and this is the meaning of the uh, the speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, in the Hadith Muadh Ibn Jabal. It's a long Hadith, and the Sheikh mentions part of it. He says, "Shall I not inform you? Shall I not inform you about 
what is at the head of the affair and what is its uh, uh, points that uphold it or its important points or uh, pillars and uh, the Shaykh wasn't uh, uh, then the Prophet uh, then um, uh, Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu he says uh, I said yes he says I said yes Ya Rasulullah then the Prophet sallallahu replied to him and he said that the head of the affair said the head then he said to him that the head of the of the affair is is the Islam that the head of the matter is Islam and its support or the pillars that support it, it's the prayer and at the top of the home or the top of it like as in the peak the peak of Islam it is jihad in the path of Allah Jalla wala. and so the Sheikh goes on to ex- explain this and he says the head of the affair is al is al Islam, and and the Sheikh says it's 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 unknown, it's known that it's known, it's well known, um, it's common knowledge uh, that the that the head, uh, for example, our head, the head uh, of the body, it's it's at the top, and without if the head is cut off, the body will dissipate, it, it, it will it, it will just you know it'll cease to function. Um, and the Sheikh says that at the head of the affairs is Al-Islam. And it is um, lowering, at least Islam is submitting yourself, submission with the Tawheed of Allah and lowering yourself and humbling yourself in front of Allah Jalla wa'ala and, and following the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and obeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and um, performing uh, uh, and acting and actualizing the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and having Iman, etc. So then the Sheikh continues, he says, فَإِذَا لَمْ يُقِمْ هَذَا الْأَصْلِ فِي الْقَلْبِ فَلَا إِسْلَامُ فَلَا إِسْلَامُ وَلَا دِينُ وَلَا وَلَا يَقْبَلَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِنْ مِنْ الْعَامِلِ الْعَمَلُ فَهَذَا الْأَسَاسَ الَّذِي يُبْنَى عَلَيْهِ دِينُ اللَّهِ وَلِهَذَا كَانَ نَبِيُّنَا عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ إِذَا أَتَاهُ الْآتِي الرَّاغِبُ فِي هَذَا الدِّينِ أول ما يعرض عليه عليه شهادة شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله هذا أول ما يعرض على من يريد الدخول في هذا الدين لأن هذا أساس الدين الذي عليه يبنى دين الله جل وعلا فإذا فإذا ناقض أحد هذا الأساس لم يقم له دين دين بل ينتقد دينه دينه ولهذا سمي المصنف رحمه الله هذه الأمور نواقض لدين الإسلام لأن الدين ينتقد وتنتحل وراه ولا ينتفع بعمل ولا عبادة لأن هذا النواقض تفسد الدين وتبتله كما أن الصلاة بدون طهارة لا تقبلوا فكذلك دين الله سبحانه وتعالى بدون هذه الأصول لا يقبل فإذا ناقض إنسان هذه الأصول لم يقبل الله جل وعلا منه دين. So then in this paragraph the Sheikh says, so if this foundation that the Sheikh has been talking about is not upright and upheld in the person's heart, that doesn't believe firmly within his heart regarding the foundations of our deen, then there is no Islam and no religion for him. Allah will not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept from him any action or deed of worship, whatever it is, not accepted. And the Sheikh says, this is the foundation that our deen is built upon, the deen of Allah is built upon, and um, the stands upon. And this is the reason why our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa if a person came to him wanting to become a Muslim and enter the deen of Allah and Islam, he would say to them, he would say to them and tell them to say the shahada and la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah. This is the first thing that he would show and make apparent to them and for them to say, whoever wanted to enter the deen of Allah. Why? Because the Sheikh says, why? Because this is the foundation of our deen. This is what the rest of the deen of Allah is built upon. This magnificent and great foundation. 
So if is if somebody nullifies this foundation, then nothing else stands on it because a foundation is no longer there. And without a foundation, a building cannot stand. It will just collapse. And there's nothing there then after that, apart from rubble. And this is why, the Sheikh says, this is why the author of this book, Nawakid al-Islam, the Nullifiers of Islam, this is why the author named the uh, uh, named this book, the Nullifiers of the of the religion of Islam, the, the Nullifiers of the religion of Islam. Because, because the deen, the religion, of, the, the religion, if it is nullified, yeah, I was rendered nullified, then the person who was nullified, who was upon that nullif nullification of his deen, then he he does not benefit from it. He, nor does he benefit from worshipping or any good deeds. He does not benefit because he has corrupted his religion and falsified and nullified his religion. And the Sheikh gives us an example to contrast and compare with this. He says, just like when, uh, just like the prayer, without purification, your prayer is not accepted. Like that as well. Gives a nice example for us. And so the Sheikh continues and he says, because this is from the foundation of our deen, what is mentioned earlier in the paragraph. And so without the foundation, if it's not present, there is no religion, and then nothing of worship is accepted. Allah doesn't accept it. So if a person nullifies uh, any of the foundations of, of, of the religion of Islam, then Allah does not accept anything from him, doesn't accept his deen from him. So inshallah, I think um, we'll just we'll, we'll stop uh, we'll stop just here in a minute. Inshallah. وَلِهَذَا أَيُّ دِينٍ وَأَيُّ إِسْلَامٍ وَأَيُّ إِيمَانٍ إِنْ إِنْ دَمَنْ يَرَى أَنَّ هَدِيَ غَيْرِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ خَيْرًا مِنْ هَدِيهِ أَوْ أَنَّ حُكْمَ غَيْرِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ حُكْمِهِ أَيْنَ الدِّينُ أَيْنَ الدِّينُ مَنْ كَانَ كَذَلِكَ أين دين من كان كذلك أين إيمانه أين إسلام أين إسلا أين إسلامه إذا كان بهذه بهذه الصفة. So the Sheikh says, and so therefore, if the person is like this with no foundation, if a person has no foundation, then which religion is he upon? Which Islam is he upon? If he does not follow, I follow the the two testifications. If he doesn't actualize them, that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah, and that. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the slave and messenger of Allah, and and does not follow his example. Then, you know, who uh, then if someone believes, for example, that uh, he's upon better guidance than the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or he is uh, uh, he rules and follows laws and legislature which is better than what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, then what religion is he upon? What, where's his iman? The Sheikh says, where is his religion? Where is his is uh, iman? Where is his belief? Where is his Islam? Yeah, if the person is uh, uh, upon this kind of description. So, inshallah, we'll stop. Then we'll continue next week, Billahi Taala, and we'll conclude. Then now we're getting close to the time of Maghrib here, so uh, we'll finish and conclude here. Barakallahu fiqum. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Wa astaghfiruk wa tuhu bilaik. Sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته